coaching experiences or probably got some you know, good things from other people and everything like that. And I just want you to know that I've been in quite a few different places and you know, I've picked up a little bit from here and there. And, and I'm just going to go over how we would game plan or how we would prepare ourselves right up to, to Saturday. Um, and then later on, I'll get into some specifics as how we attack seven man front, eight man front, that type of thing. Um, now, um, first of all, uh, let me say this. I, I don't, we don't use a computer. You know, and basically the reason for that is because I always felt, and I learned this from Coach Narduzzi when I was a young staff working with him, uh, of all the people that I've ever worked for, I always felt that he probably had a, a, maybe the most unique way, or I always felt like our kids were more prepared for a game uh, when working for him. He never used a computer either. That's just when they would be starting to come forward and everything else, and he, he would not allow us to use one. So um, I guess I probably have adopted that. I know there's a lot of different software out there and everything like that. Basically, the reason why I don't is one simple thing, that I felt like, you know, if I was writing it down, you know, going through and doing out all the tallies and this and that and everything else, it stayed here a lot longer and a lot better than me just reading the program sheet off of the computer. I'm not trying to advocate that that's the way you do it. Obviously, you're going to do it the way that works best for you and which way you feel most comfortable. But we do not use a computer prior to never have, and I won't say never will, because it never is an awful long time, but uh, uh, we just don't, we don't use one. We don't have a scouting service or a, a software or whatever. Uh, we do have software that we use when we working up our percentages and things like that at the end of the year um, when we want to see what our uh, efficiency was and that type of thing. So that's why we, we use these charts. Okay, first of all, a clearing uh, or in our conference, we have, when we get ready for our, our opponent, we will always have at least three games or three previous games. Obviously, at the beginning of the year, you know, you won't have that, but we don't play anybody in our conference, uh, you know, early. We always have a, a non-conference team usually. Now, because of us being in the league, we have a lot of crossover. Um, you know, we might follow a team, so by the time we get ready to play them at the end of the year, we might have a six or seven game uh, breakdown on that film. Maybe because of other opponents are playing throughout the league. The first chart that I have on your uh, and a hand out there, obviously, it's very simple. And you know, that's just a film breakdown sheet. That's all that is. Okay. Um, and we go through, and I make our guys, and I, I uh, will do this myself. I'll go through and I diagram everything in there. Um, uh, basically, just because of, uh, you know, I want to see what their stunts are, uh, coverages, and, and different things like that. We'll try to go through. And we'll diagram it because we do, uh, these people that have followed us in the past, you know, we used to throw the ball quite a bit uh, because of the quarterbacks we had. We used a lot of that West Coast passing game. And that. So we always wanted to make sure what type of coverages they would be in, just in case they wanted to kind of give us some type of a uh, sky. Now, what I'll do is just to show you kind of how we work all this stuff through. Uh, <laughs> If you look on the, the first one there, and I'll just, um, just for some examples. Um, get some transparency coming down ahead. Okay, as far as the front is concerned, uh, we were just, you know, called out of college 4 3, and then depending on what type of coverage. Now, a lot of the coverages that we're seeing, which I'll go into a little bit later when we're looking 4 3, is we're seeing what um, we call it cover 8, but it's that double robin with the three safety uh, playing number two, uh, the backers are playing flat, the corners are playing number one, and um, the safety reads number two. The safety goes deep. He's going to carry him. If not, he's going to rob the curl. So we're seeing an awful lot of 
Chicago Bears is the one where we kind of started running this. But we will identify the coverage. Um, um, so, Josh, we just call that four three, and I, we cover eight. Right? Maybe that's the first play of the game. Right? We put that down in there. The second one might have been. Uh, uh, now we do have a different name for this, but this is for simplicity's sake today. Again, you can call it whatever you want. If this was a two technique now, instead of a, a one technique like the first time, which does make a difference to us. Uh, I mean, some people might not make a whole lot of difference, but it will make a difference to us, whether that's a two I or a one or a heavy one or whatever. We'll, we'll give this another name, and in our terminology, it's, it's just a, it's a four or three slides, I would call it, just down into you know, two lives. But again, we'll go through the film and we'll identify, uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll identify the stunts. Again, yeah, we'll use our names. Um, well, let me just say, let's say, for example, they do this to you one time. Right. Still use a 4 3 personnel to kick it through the tight end or whatever. Um, and uh, again, just for simplicity's sake, we would just, although that's not really true 50 personnel, we would just call it 50. Um, but that's what we do. We just go through and identify. We draw them up, we have a visual picture. Okay? Now, the second page, this is really where the, the tabulation starts. Okay? After we've broken down all the films, we will go through here and we will draw all the fronts. And again, I draw them so that we can visual picture. Let's say the first, um, again, first defense, first and ten was this front here. Okay, so we draw it in. And we'll draw it the first time we see it, put it up there in the corner or whatever, and we'll just start tallying. It. It'll go through. Right? You know, we color code the games. Maybe the next, you know, we run it three times. The next time it's, you know, that type of thing. You know, if we have four different games, we'll have four different colors on there, so we'll know how many times each time they ran versus uh, whatever opponent. The reason that's important to us is because they might be doing it for a reason because of the opponent that they're playing that particular week. Um, so, um, to give you an example, we played a team last year that always played uh, this prop, but instead of shading the tackle, they played him in a zero technique, set up on the center, and the reason was because they had, they felt uh, that that two eye, the two gap, that center, and they wanted to free the back up to, to Mike back to be able to straight from B gap to B gap, and uh, I mean they would never do that against us because of all our misdirection and everything. But, so we didn't have to worry about that's what I'm getting at. We didn't have to worry about telling our center you're going to see him as a zero uh, because of, they wouldn't play it that way. But again, we'll start to tally it. Then we'll go, you know, we have a red zone, as you see. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll tally all the first and ten plays, all the fronts that we're going to see on first and ten for that, or that we have to, let's put it that way. Then the next thing is second law. And second, we need second short again. And then when you get to the red zone, you would drop it down in there. All right? And you've got everything. You draw the picture of it. You only have to draw one and just tally underneath every time that it happens. And you flip the page and, you know, you see we got third long, third medium. Now, we break up third and two and third and one. Um, that's just something that, that we do. Some people may, may not have to do that. And I will say this, in each week, we might not do it each week because uh, maybe one particular week we'll see the same front as we'll see on third and one and we'll see on third and two. But there's a lot of times we won't. A lot of times people, at least against us, will stay in their base defense, maybe with some type of pressure, uh, and third and two. Now, third and one, they may get to a goal line. Okay? So that's why we break those up. Again, you have the red stuff. Now, 
So the categories I want to talk about. Coming out. This is coming out of the uh, shadow of your own goal line. All right? Certain teams will do certain things uh, against people uh, depending on what they want to try to do when they're coming out. Maybe uh, put a lot of blitz. Maybe they want to blitz you down there. Uh, maybe they want to uh, sit back and play deep, play, play deep in the secondary, but uh, play aggressive up front or, or what else. Okay? Maybe some weeks there is no difference. I don't know. Okay? But we have a category coming out. Four minutes. What that four minute is, is when you are ahead and the other team has to get the football. Alright? What do they do to you in that, that period of time at the end of the game? Alright? You're ahead, four minutes to go in the game. Alright? By three, by four, or whatever. Uh, we break it down on the film. Okay, what are they doing defensively to try to make you pop off the ball, stop your force, your puck, turn over, what else? So that's what that category is right there. Right? That's what that four minute category is. Alright, two tight ends. What do they do when you play when there are two tight ends in the game? And a lot of people that play a four three will still try to stay in a four three. Uh, other teams may not. They may try to play with two three techniques, two backwards inside. Um, maybe uh, they'll play a, a nine technique on one side, but a six or a seven technique on the other, on the back side. Um, sometimes two nine techniques. But uh, we want to know because of what happens, you know, what we try to do offensively, we want to know what they do uh, when there's two tight ends in the game. All right? Um, Now, the next category is obviously fourth down. All right, what do they do? You know, when you want to go for it on fourth down, um, you know, what type, what thoughts are they in? Um, what, do you, what do you have to prepare for? Now, all this is important because this is how we make up our call sheet. Now, I'll get into that in a minute, all right? Um, and it makes it easy when we start to sit down and decide what plays we're going to run, all right? Okay, so we have the tendency, we have to know what stuff, you know, four three shoot. Man free. Uh, eight man front. Uh, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, okay? Then going in. Right? What we call going in is on the ten yard line going into the uh, toward the goal line. So from the plus ten to what we say the plus four, what are they going to do defensively? Like blitz, whatever. Okay? Then goal line, we start goal line from the four yard line. Now this, I will say this, this changes a little bit each week. Okay? Because there are some people out there who believe that they're not going to put their goal line defense in until you only have for example, let me back up and say this. If it's first and goal on the four, you'll see the goal line defense. If it's second and goal on the four, they're going to be in their base defense because their philosophy is they're not going to go to the goal line. You only have to get one yard for the number of plays you have left to score a touchdown. You understand what I'm saying? So if it's fourth down, or excuse me, third down, and it's on the four yard line, you're not going to be, or three yard line, you're not going to be in goal line. They're going to stop with third down and on the one, yeah, they'd be in goal line. Because one or third down and two, excuse me, third down and two, they'd be in goal line. So you third down, you get one yard to the one yard line, the fourth down, you get one yard to the four. So some teams have that philosophy. So that may change a little bit, but uh, generally what we'll do is we'll start at the four yard line. All right? And what, what, what are we going to see? Stunts, no coverages, that type of thing. And then, uh, if there's any teams that we, uh, you know, in our film breakdown, and other teams have gone for two point plays, and they've been in some defenses, they categorize them and play there. Right? The last two point play. Okay? Now, these are all, again, we're just tallying, tallying this stuff up. Now, the next chart that you should have. <coughs> is 
Gardner's pile. And this we give to the quarterbacks. All right? Tell them, okay, what coverage, what's the front going to be in the coverage? Let's say that they're a 4 3 team. All right? And maybe they ran 4 3. Let's say you're breaking down, you have a five game breakdown. All right? 80, they ran 80 snaps each game. Okay? You have 400 snaps of defense. You go down here and say 4 3, cover 3, 120 times. Four games or whatever. Okay. Uh, you know, any stunts or whatever in that last category. But that's how we'll list, we'll list the coverage. To the right there, front. Okay? We'll list the number, we'll list the front, 4 3, 50, 4 4, whatever, fair, double eagle, whatever. Total number of times. Now, out of the 4-3, they started, you know, how many times? And we want to put a percentage there also. I'll get to that for a second. Now, the reason we do that is because certain teams that give you multiple fronts, they only blitz out of one front. And they only run certain stunts out of one front. So what we're telling our quarterback or our players is, hey, if they're in a 50, they're probably going to play even no. But if they're four three, look at the double, you know, guy coming off the <laughs> or you know, Mike coming through the A or Mike coming through the B or whatever. Hopefully that will tell us with that chart right there. All right. Stop blitz percentage by zone. All right. This red zone is the 25 to the 11. Going in is 10 to the 4, they say, and then the goal line. Now. This tells us once we get to their, we're threatening their goal line. We're at the 25-yard line, and we're a threat to their goal line. That's usually when people are going to start heating it up for you, okay? And so that we have that put down, and we know what the percentage and everything are there. Then we do it by down and distance. All right, first and ten, second long, second medium, second short, and so on. Third and long, third short, third and medium. All right, now, before I go any farther, we do all of this, but there may be some games, and I don't want to say it's a waste of time, but not, you, you won't get any strong percentages strong enough to use. Okay? So we use 72%. That's what we use. Um, again, I know some people use 70, some people use 66, some use 75. Uh, we use 72. This is something that uh, when I first started coaching, uh, there was a number and, and, and I've just been using that. Okay, I feel comfortable with that. So we feel that if something shows up 72% of the time, we better start worrying about it. We better start preparing for it. we got to have an answer for it because we're going to see it. Okay? So you can't coach against everything that you're going to see. And you got to know, if you run this offense, you know, you watch a game, buy a game, right? And then they come and play you in a completely different game. You know, just because of what you do. And I know that happens, that happens to us too, right? But we, yeah, we know that if it's 72%, we are going to have some I mean, We may have to change a blocking scheme. We may have to change a technique or something. That's the, the percentage we use. But that's what this chart will give us. We'll know what we have to worry about. We've broken it down by the, the areas that we think are important, coverage is front, then by you know, the uh, zone, the red zone going in, goal line, and then we do it by down and distance. Okay? So that, but we will give the quarterback, and this will also be a scouting report, uh, but we really don't go over with the other kids that much. But our quarterback and their meetings during the week uh, with Coach Rohan, uh, they'll know this. They'll know this chart. When they get their test on Friday night, they'll have to answer the question, what's the percentage of Michael QDA in the red zone, you know, first and ten or whatever. Okay. Now, if it's only 36 percent, we're not going to test them on that. Again, they only have to worry about the ones that are 72 or high. Okay. 
So, but that, that goes in the staff report, the coaches also use that. Now, that gets me to the next one. Okay? This is our call sheet. This is what the coordinator has, and this is what I have on the sideline right here. Alright? I don't have the front here, I can't find, but the front of the one that has the front and back on it, on the front, you see we have the same categories, okay, that we had on our breakdown. And this is actually our call sheet. This is where we call our plays from. Okay, now we'll sit down, okay, and start to decide what we want to run. Now, there are some questions that we have to answer for us. Okay, the first thing that we want to know in the front, right? Number one. <coughs> you want to know how the ends are playing. It's a four, three, the nine technique and a five technique. All right? How are they playing? Now, I don't know about you guys, but we're seeing an awful lot of people at our level now um, because of what we try to do. We call it long arm or cross hat. Okay, instead of, you know, the old traditional way of taking on the kick out block and trying to squeeze it. Well, we're getting guys, you know, they're actually long arms and trying to make the play bounce. Okay? Although we still do have some people because they're afraid afraid of our flank game, they won't do that. They'll squeeze it, okay, and try to keep everything inside the end. So basically what we're trying asking with that question is. Do the ends worry about containing, or do they worry about stopping the off-tackle play and keeping the ball from going north and south? And they want to make it go east and west. Okay? So we want to know one of the things to try to decide is breaking down the film. How are those ends going to play? Okay? The second question is very important to ask is how Do the backers run? What I mean by that, are they taking run through or are they straight? Okay? In other words, um, okay, um, What I'm getting at is if this guy blocks back, and this guy blocks back, and this guy holds, okay, are these backers going to attack this way, or are they going to come this way? And that's what I mean. Right? Are they going to take the run through when it's created to try to chase it down from the back side, or are they just going to scrape over the top and try to reach the point of attack? And this is very important for us because it's going to determine a lot of how we're going to maybe run our double team. You know, whether we've got a, you know, the old conditional post or have the guy come off the down part of it, go over the top, or the post guy have to come off because the back is going to be running through or, or whatever. Okay, and a lot of that's predicated on linebacker depth, too. Is linebacker, and then he's back in traditional four and a half, five yards, or is he playing up there tightest, you know, two yards, one and a half, or whatever, put him in position. But it's very important for us to know how the backers 
are going to run. Are they going to run through or are they going to straight? Now, the next thing is spacing. Okay, how many backs? Is there a three back to look inside or is there a two back to look inside? And really, we really didn't concern ourselves with this as much until the last couple of years we started messing around with the triple option. Um, because again, like I said in the past, um, you know, we, we had a great quarterback and, and we threw the ball quite a bit, so really we didn't determine or, or didn't really concern ourselves that much about that. But now, because of the triple option and, and some of the other things we're doing in the running game, it's very important our offensive linemen have to know whether it's a three-backer look or a two-backer look uh, on the inside. Okay? But those are some of the things, some of the questions. And then, obviously, the last question is coverage. Okay? Um, cover um, two, three, four, whatever. Okay, we want to know what type of coverages um, we're going to probably see. Okay, and again, maybe because of us now getting more into the option game, maybe that we might not have to concern ourselves as much with this because people probably aren't going to play a lot of the same coverages against the same kind of pattern uh, because of our passing game. Right? We might get some more traditional you know, cover three or that double robber look, so we always have an alley player coming to the out. I don't know. But these are the questions. All right, now, get back to our chart. After we feel like we've answered these questions, we will go now, and if you look on the front of this sheet, we have first and ten. Second seven, second medium, second short, red zone, third and seven, third medium, third two, third one, red zone, Third medium red zone, third short red zone. Okay. After we looked at all the percentages, this is when we start saying, okay, we'll run jump to uh, 988 down. Right? And that's based on what they do on first down, that's, that's what we're going to run. Right? Now, I always say that if you have to study this during the game, you're going to need to ask. What this is really, any call sheet, right? See, to me, I think play calling is overrated. I really do. I, you know, I, I think that the, the, the part that's very important is during the week teaching your kids what to expect and, and what and, and what to learn. You know, things are going good. Your offensive coordinator, you head coaches, you don't even look at your call sheet. You're just going with your head, with your feel, what's happening, and everything else. I always felt like if you've got to work with your sheet, right, and come up with a play, a lot of times, you're in trouble. Right? But that's what we do it for. We do it so that if we're in a situation, and also as a reminder as a coach, the play caller, it gives him a reminder of what to be prepared for. And this is what we saw during the week of preparation. This is what we prepared for in first down. This is what we're going to go with. Now, do we only call the plays that are listed in first and ten on first and ten? No. Because you guys know football is nothing more than a game of adjustments. How you do something, you do something well. That guy across the field from you is no dummy. He's going to do something to adjust to stop you from what you're doing. Okay? But what this does is it gives you some, gives you some uh, guidelines or some ways that you can stand there and, and make some play calls. But we have all the percentages, we'll always write the percentage up there, blitz, stop, whatever. Now, there's probably no more than 10 plays listed in first and 10. Right? Maybe 11 sometimes. Okay? We feel just because of this is what they've been having a tendency to do in first and 10, we feel comfortable running these plays and we think they're going to work. Right? And so that's how we do that. And you got your goal line and everything else down there. On the back, the categories on the back, and I'll use the, the uh, transparency here, is our coming out, our four minute situation when we got to hang on to the football. 
This category here listed bear, that's that Chicago, and the reason we call it bear, because that's the best buddy Ryan needs, because we see a lot of people that run that. And there are certain things in our offense that just burn that. Okay? I mean, you're scorching. So we make sure, and usually they're at the same place every week. But maybe sometimes some teams play man, some teams might play man three, some teams try to play zone out of that front, whatever. That may change. But we'll have a category, so if a team runs that particular look, okay, we'll have a list of plays that we'll be ready for. Now, you know, people don't run that as their base look, they use it as a change up. So we just, you know, that one might be a situation where we know they're going to be in there, we might look at that, that particular column right, when we want to run that particular week against them. Now, we play some teams that don't even run that defense. Well, that, that column would be blank when we went into that week. All right, blitz. All right, what are the blitzes that, that have the high percentage that we want to be prepared for that we're going to probably see? All right, so we'll have our list of plays that we're going to go to uh, when we anticipate those blitzes coming. Okay? Um, Last three plays, that's when you got the ball, there's only time maybe for three more plays, and you got to score. Uh, we have some special plays that we run, like we call rebounds, uh, curl and lateral or whatever, you know, you might have some type of special plays that you might want to use in that situation. Those usually don't change. Two minutes, end of a half, end of a end of the game, you get into your two minute offense, all right, we know what we want to run. We have an inside half where we're not where we have maybe three timeouts. We're not worried about trying to control the clock as much. Or maybe it's because they're taking away the outside uh, because uh, in the games that we broke down, you know, they, they sit and cover two maybe or whatever, take away the outside line, whatever. So we'll let some play that we'll want to run maybe with an type of inside cut. Um, uh, boundary passes. Those are, you know, passes where we are going to throw it to the boundary where the guy can get, you know, to the sideline. Maybe because, you know, depending again how many timeouts or, or whatever the situation is called for, but we'll have them listed yet. And the reason we do this is we don't want to be sitting up there in the press box thinking, gee, you know, what am I going to call? Okay. Again, we do this on Monday, Tuesday, air conditioned office. Okay, no pressure. Nothing's going on. You think it through, this is your plan, this is what you're going to go with, okay? It's a lot better to do it than to wait until Saturday afternoon, okay? Uh, you know, the president's pounding on one side of the box, and, and the head coach is screaming at you through the year, you know, and the coordinator is trying to come up with some plays. Uh, we already have thought it through, and that's why we have these written down there. Going in, our two-point play, um, again, what we want to run that week. Now, this category runs, and category of passes, and category of play pass, those are all the plays that we have red listed for that week. We have what we call red list plays, and we have what we call blue list plays. Our red list plays are the ones we have to run that week. Period. We've got to make them work, or we're not going to win. That's what we feel. Our blue listed plays are the plays that we're going to go to when you guys make an adjustment to stop our red list plays we're going to go to our blue list plays. Okay. But uh, we will have our, all our red list plays there first, and then underneath it we'll have our, our blue list. But the, the red list are the ones we have to go. But that's our call sheet. That's it. That's what our, that's what our coordinator, I mean, I have one of these, um, and uh, uh, he calls everything down through me. But this is it. This is our call sheet. Okay. This is what we do. Right? And that's, if you, by giving you those other charts, then you can see how, why we do it the way we do. And so we, we just transpose it to our uh, offensive coordinator, just transposes it to the call sheet. And that, that's, how we, that's how we do it. Okay? And uh, the last couple sheets that I put in there are just uh, sheets that you know, we give uh, to our quarterback, again, and are also in our scout report. Uh, this sheet here uh, just has the fronts, you know, the numbers and everything like that. So you see that. Talking about this 
particular one here. Now, we, uh, since we are a multiple formation team, we give them to our quarterback also each week. Okay, different formations that we're going to use. This is in his scouting point, and uh, I'll get into our LBs, you know, running against the 50 and the 40 in the next hour. But let's, like I said, we have red list of plays and blue list of plays, all right? Um, we'll, like say, for example, let's say for this particular week, we got to run 29 sweep. All right, that's a red list of play. Right? So that's an LB there, all right? Uh, maybe um, 88 down option would be blue list. Right? But that's what he'll get. He'll get the formation and the plays that we're going to use that particular week um, uh, for the opponent that we're playing. And we'll be red list and blue list. And yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yes, our coordinator will take a red pen, and he'll write in the plays, and he'll take a blue pen and write in the, and used to have a chart here up, or I mean those uh, names and stuff now, but when I was a school teacher, you can make those color Ditto machine. And so we used to do it, use red ditto and blue ditto, tight, but I you know, can't do that anymore. Those things are obsolete, I guess. So what I have my guy do is he just sits over the red pen and he'll write in by hand, it's one night's week. And when he's got options, blue, 24 star trap, whatever. Okay. But yeah, so our quarterback will show every, every uh, formation that we're going to use that particular week, um, he'll, he'll give them. <coughs> It'll we'll give them in the play that we're probably going to use. The right 100, right 900, what we call a star 900. Okay. Um, so we'll have everything. So the quarterback will have his list. Okay, of play. The last sheet I just put in there, again, all this is is this, this is how we grade it. You know. List of plays down here through the column. Okay, and uh, write the kid's name up here. And that's how it's great. You know, you guys have your own grades. So I'm not sure. But I just put that in because that's what we use. Like I said, I mean, nothing that, I mean, we do it, do it that way because we want to transpose all our. All our uh, information is right onto our game sheet. Okay, and that's that's why we do it by the chart. And that's why again I don't we don't use the computer. Um, and again, it's just something that I learned a long, long time ago and, and you know habits are hard to break. And uh, I know I coached defense when I was with, with Bill at Youngstown, but I always felt our kids were so well prepared when we played. And again, it was just because he wanted the coach to do everything by hand. And like I said, sometimes you'll do something and you won't get a tendency because it's just not strong enough. You know, and some people might think, well, geez, you just wasted two hours or whatever it is. Maybe. What I look at is I didn't waste it because now I know I don't have to worry about teaching my kids this week because they may not have to worry about that. They're only going to see it 20% of the time. So maybe the 20%, you know, if we get, uh, uh, I don't know, how many snaps you guys would average, but, you know, 20% of the time, if they run that stop you 20% of the time, and you're successful, the other eight ain't going to beat you. Okay. So um, that's why we don't use a computer. I, I just, and again, it's, I know there's an awful lot of uh, great uh, programs out there, and there's an awful lot of successful coaches, and a lot more successful than myself, that do use it. So, but that's what we do, and that's, and that's it right there. That's, that's all the charts that we use offensively. That stuff is all compiled and done by the time we take the practice field on Tuesday. Those charts that I showed you, uh, our quarterback uh, coach did it each one with our quarterbacks on Tuesday, and that's when they did it. We don't practice on them. Right? We watch film on Sundays, grade the film, lift them, and we give them Monday off. We don't practice on them. 
they don't even come over to the office. They don't do anything. Okay? The NCA requires you to make sure that you're only allowed 20 hours a week. The NCA requires you must give them one day off every seven days. So our day off is Monday. So it gives the coaches an awful lot of time to be able to get all this done and everything like that. So when we go into practice on Tuesday, when we have our meetings Tuesday at 2 o'clock before we start practice, our kids will get the game plan, okay, the scouting report, excuse me, they'll get the scouting report, and then the quarterback will get their stuff actually at noon at lunch. Our, our uh, coordinators lunch every day with our quarterback, and they'll get their pack, okay? So that when they come to the 2 o'clock meeting, they have their packet, and then we just start preparing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and we prepare two days, really, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's it. It's Thursday, in our practice, when we set it up, we'll the first hour will be all special teams. Now, we do a special team on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we can both a whole practice on Thursday as a special team. And then uh, the last 40 minutes, uh, 45 minutes, is nothing but a team period, uh, offense and defense, where we're just polishing things up. So that's why we got to have all this stuff done you know, by Tuesday. And we don't add anything once. Uh, uh, practice is over on Tuesday, nothing is ever at. And there is stuff taken out, okay, but there is never anything at. And then, of course, Friday is just a uh, you know, walkthrough or whatever, and Saturday we line up. So um, that's why we don't worry and concern ourselves about things that don't show up 72% or higher. Okay, we'll talk about it in meetings, and maybe we'll make light or mention to it, but we're not actually going to go out on the practice field and spend time working again because we just feel like we got to prepare to get the things that we're going to see 72 percent at a time or more. Okay? And that's what we've got to work on, and that's the only way we're going to win is be prepared for that. Okay? And by doing those charts and things like that, of course, I guess you say, yeah, computer or whatever, but again, I think by doing it by hand, it's gives the coach a little more confidence, at least me it does, gives me a little more confidence that I have a better idea of what that coordinator is going to do on the other side. Because defensive coordinators are just like offensive coordinators. And I've got both. Right? And I'll guarantee you, when something works, you're going to do it. Okay? And, and if you've had success the last three weeks on third down and three, and you block bringing Mike back to the A gap, and it's worked for you, you're going to do the same thing when you play Clarity. And so that's why we got to be prepared for a third down in that situation. We've got to be prepared for that Mike Backer coming through that. Because that's what he's going to call. And it's the same thing on the East or offense. You know, if you run play 55 and it works for you on third down and that's what you're going to call, regardless of who you're playing over. If you have that confidence. But that, that's our scouting report. That's how we prepare, and um, that's how we transpose it to our call sheet. And uh, uh, you know, that's that's what we do. Now, one last thing, and we'll break here. We do script. Okay. Um, uh, we I don't use the same same uh, type of philosophy that Bill Walsh may use. Uh, or some of the West Coast people do, we do it more by formation. Okay? What I mean by that is uh, our first 10 plays of, our, of the game, or I shouldn't say that, maybe the first, because if we're not gaining any yards on first and 10, you know, we're not going to fold the script. You know, we're going to try to get a first down. Okay? But maybe our first first and 10, our first 10 first and 10 plays, and we'll have 10 different formations or motions or shifts or whatever because we want to see how the defense is going to react to what we do by our formation. In other words, let's say if we go unbound into the boundary, okay, what are they going to do? Coverage wise, front block. Uh, maybe we'll go unbalanced to the field with a wing and a spread in. Or maybe we'll go with a dive back and a spread in just to see how they're going to change. And that's how we, that's what we do when we scrap. We want to find out how they are going to react to our formations because we are so formation 
oriented, um, that that's what we've got to know. Okay. Blue and red, how are they going to react to blue and red? Are they going to be any different than the Lord wanted in that? Um, now we use flat motion too, it's just a three step. You know, when we go flat motion, how are they going to react to it? Just, you know, are they considering that guy receiving and changing their coverage? Uh, well, they don't. So we do script our first, you know, usually about our first 10 or 11 plays. And uh, like I said, we're not going to follow that. It's not the first 10 plays of the game. Because if we run the first play of the game and we only gain one yard to the second and nine, you know, we're going to go probably to our second long call and look at that. Okay? Uh, we're not just going to follow, follow the script because that's what we decided to do on uh, you know, the first Sometimes we will. I mean, it depends where you are on the field or, or whatever. But we do script. Okay, our first 10 to 10 and 12 plays. Is there any questions? Okay, I guess we're supposed to uh, break here. Uh, from, I say, well, who wait about five minutes, whatever, and then I'm supposed to talk to you about four or three you know, game plans, some of the things that we try to do.
But that's basically the defenses that we're seeing. Now, I don't know about you guys, uh, uh, what you're seeing, but um, this, this is what we're seeing. So what I'm saying to you is, hey, if you want, want me to go over something because of a special defense you're seeing, I'll try to do that for you. Uh, unless you stop me and we continue right on going through what we do versus the score of three. Okay, again, everything we do is based on formation. What I'll do is I'll put it up here, tell you what we do, and then I'll diagram it for you so that you can see how it blocks. <coughs> This is what we call blue formation. And versus a 4-3, what is place we want to establish is 88 down option. Okay, now first of all, before I go any farther, this is a seven-man front. And the old history books and the old wing key people will tell you that when you run against the seven man front, the first thing you gotta do is start at a flank. Either run in a block flank or an option flank. You gotta establish a flank. Okay? Uh, I think the four three poses some different problems uh, because the way they're running it's still a seven man front, but it sometimes will give you an eight man front uh, you know sometimes it'll give you eight man front tenants. What I mean is because an eight man front they tell you to start off tackle and, and a seven man front they tell you to you know find a flank, start outside and work your way in. Uh, because of the four three, it's still a seven man front, but because of the bubbles at the off tackle, sometimes you might want to start your game plan there or your game there. But um, we look at it as a seven man front and because of the way the ends are playing, first of all let me say this. Against us the, the two defensive ends in this defense are flying up the field. Okay? They are not, they do not ride our tight end when our tight end goes down inside. They do not ride on the split inside. They do not ride our tackle when our tackle goes down inside. They will not squeeze them. Okay? They come flying up the field. Again, maybe this is because of the history of what we've been doing the last couple of years, and maybe that will change uh, uh, when we change a little bit of what we're doing. But right now, what we're seeing is Two defensive ends flying up the field. Now, once if the guy that's flying up over goes down inside, they're doing that term that I called to talk to you a little bit earlier about called wrong arms. Right? They they will not worry about contain. Against us, they don't worry about that. They're going to make everything bounce. So uh, that's how the defensive ends uh, against Clary anyway. That's how it's playing. The two inside guys, the one technique. The A gap player and the B gap player on the defensive line are writers. They're reading. Okay? Um, and, and some teams will even play that three technique off the ball a little bit because they're still worried about all the down blocks that, that we have. Uh, but that's what we're seeing. Okay, the two inside guys are a little more passive, a little reading a little bit more. The two outside guys, they're in a racehorse stance, ass up in the air white knuckles and they're coming off the ball. Okay, they crowd the ball as tight as they can get and they're, they're just getting up field. It's almost like their mentality is sack the quarterback and react to the run. Okay? So that's what we're seeing. So when we get ready for a lot of we feel that we want to get the uh, down option established to the tight end. Now, we will run 29 sweep, but quite honestly, I don't like the buck sweep to get to 4 3. Now maybe it's because we don't do a very good job of coaching it, uh, but we just don't have a whole lot of success. And we have some, um, but it's not something that we can hang our hat on because the backers uh, run so well. We, just, we can't get that Mike backer blocked a lot of times um, uh, out, of the, out of the box. Sweet action. This Mike backer just, because, you know, it's a different versus a 50. You know, that, that backside back that lines up there, you know, your guard's got a chance to get there and wall him off or, you know, trap him and push him past the hole. 
Um, but to get to a four three, a lot of times, you know, if there's a one technique here, they may even have that mic back and cheat it over into a ten, what we call a ten. One technique is the second level. Okay, to the, to the side we're running the sweep. We just can never get our, our backside guard there to get him blocked. And uh, now, uh, you say, well, coach, tight end is supposed to block him. That's true. Okay, that is true. We, we do, when we are successful, our tight end does block. Okay, he does get to him. But uh, there are times where he, he comes over the top or something like that, our tight end gets deep. And I'm going to sit here and tell you, you know, we're not perfect at that block. But uh, uh, when we do get, get in trouble with it, is when uh, this back might step up, takes the tight end block or whatever, occupies it, and leaves that guy free, and we're in trouble. But uh, we'll go ahead and continue to try to run it, but it's not what we would consider a blue list of play. Okay. Now, again, 4-3, because of the bubble there, and because we want to run the 88 down option, we will run 88 down. But again, that's a blue list of play. Again, we just don't feel that it's as good against uh, a 4-3 as it would be against a 50 front. We just don't have the success that we normally have. But we'll go ahead and, and run a blue list of play there. On the uh, interior, or excuse me, on the other flank, we'll run 43 option, which is our triple, and we'll run 83 option, which is our belly option. Flat, 
triple or cross block, it doesn't add to the pass. So it's not real hard to defend it. This part of the route. All we're trying to do is make each other beat speed on speed. You know, if we're ahead of the schedule, second down and one, um, the situation dictates the game and we, we can take a shot and we'll take a shot. So dropping back and trying to throw up, we'll do it all play action. But um, we will run a sheet pass uh, just for that purpose only. Okay. Now, we run, since we run 88 down option to the tight end, we will run back over here what we call 84 scissors, excuse me, 86 scissors at four. <coughs> and the 40 action over here will run 44 scissors at six. And the reason we do that is so that our fullback um, you know, Clarion is a state school. It's not like Allegheny, so we can get the bottom half of the class. Okay? So we got to tell our fullback, and when we're running scissors, we tell him where to go. All right? So we call 44, we know he's thinking the triple. If we say 88, we know he's thinking down. And then the scissors just tells us uh, where the point of the is. So uh, that's why we call it that way. Now we do it off of those actions because we're running down action to the tight end side. When we run scissors, we want to show that type of action and bring it back. And when we're running triple to the split inside, okay, we're going to show that type of action and run the counter back that way. Okay, so that's why we, we use, we'll use, we'll put both of them in. Yeah, our quarterback and our tailback have to learn two different footworks, you know, basically from the same play, but we just feel that the defenses are too, too smart and too well coached that you know they they will pick that up. Okay? So that's why we want to give them the same action when we run those uh, scissors plays. Okay. <coughs> now um, because of the way we run eight eight down option, we have what we call eighty eight down option pass. We'll fake the, the down and uh, run the pass to the halfback. You know, but if we were getting ready for a team, that that particular formation is basically what we would have. So in other words, like I said, we got three red listed plays there. You know, with the flag, um, those are the plays we feel that we've got to have those if we're going to have a chance to win. And the other one would be blue listed plays that we would go to a little bit later on. All right, I'm just going to diagram the red listed plays unless you want to see a blue listed play diagram and just tell me, all right? I'm sure most of you guys probably run all the same stuff anyway. All right. 88 down option is nothing more than a loaded option. And we're going to pitch it off four. So if you start here, we already start the place on guard. One, two, three, four. So we're going to be pitching off the corner this particular look. And we start, when we number in our option and everything, we start with the place on guard and we count out. All right. Our tight end, gap down backwards. We ask him to get to the mic. Our tackle, gap down backwards. We ask him to block the three technique. Now, because of the technique that these guys are playing against us, when we pull our guard, we tell him to actually run at the same path as if he was going to track that guy. And we will let him log himself. Right? Because, again, like I said, you know, not coming, if I'm coming to track this guy, and nor, I'm going left, so your rule is when you go left, you track left. So we all even stand there, because I coach the offensive line, I'll tell them, inside out, inside out, because I want them to run that tight path. And then at the last minute, they'll slip their head to the outside, you know, and wall and make a right shoulder block. But it's easy, because what happens is, this defense team comes up field, and like I said, because of the way they're coaching these guys to get up field, they'll plan redirect, and they'll come right down just like this. I'm lost. And as a defensive end, I'm going to get lost. It's going to make it easy because he's going to try to whatever you want to say. So we 
we tell our guy to run on an inside out path, and I get this guy along. Now, we feel that we don't have to have a mesh. Right there. If we feel that with the guard pulling, quarterback reverse, the tailback coming, and he's aiming for the inside foot, for his first step the inside foot is tight end. Alright? But that defensive end is we don't need to mesh or, or worry about trying to fake out that we're trying to fake the dive and get outside. So we tell our guy just bounce. So our fullback has got to bounce and read that, and he'll bounce outside the long block, and he becomes an extra blocker for us to the out. We're telling that we like the utopia situation, block free safety, because that means the back of the block. But in this situation, our halfback has a rule. If there's two guys outside, or excuse me, let me say it this way, since I've got it wrong this way. If there's only one guy outside the tight end, his assignment is the wall. If there are two guys outside the tight end, something like that, his assignment then will be pull, or take a pull step, and arc on five. So if there's one guy outside the tight end, he walls. There's two guys outside the tight end, he's going to pull and arc on five, which will be the deep for player. Because we're still going to pitch off, regardless, we're still going to pitch off number four. Okay. Now, this to us is the key block right here. When we first put this play in a lot of years ago, we gave him a fire step. And what would happen is, where if this guy was just coming right off the center spot, the guard couldn't get him because it was a tight one technique, and just didn't do a good enough job of getting him cut off, and he was running, and if there was any type of bubble or anything at the point of attack, he was making the play from behind. So we changed the block of the center, and we gave him basically just tell him to take a reach step, and he's going to sit right there and keep the two eyes, the one technique, whatever, the pay gap player, and run it down, down the line of scrimmage. And it's really more critical when it's a, not so much a one technique, maybe a loose one. Okay, where he's in that gray area, the center thinks we can get him scooped, and we just, we tell him now, you just sit right there and keep him from running down. He'll protect the A gap and incline, chances are he won't get there because of the fast flow, but we ask him to try to, and then cut that guy off. Right? And the reason we will do that is because we'll run the reverse. We'll go unbound and run the reverse to act off of this type of backfield action. And uh, we feel we can take care of these two guys you know, by running the reverse if they get too. And these two guys really don't hurt us over here. The guy that hurts us, and we can have everything blocked at the point of attack, but that guy right there is the guy we got to make sure we control. We can go anyway. Okay. So, our center is going to sit on the line of scrimmage and make sure he's blocked. He's not going to get to the next level. And I know we talked to Tubby, or we talked to, to Ted over at Delaware, you know, they fire us down, we try to scoop it and everything like that, but um, we just we feel that we got to keep that guy on the line and keep the center on the line of scrimmage. That's, that's down option right there, okay? Um, oh, let me go through um, crosswalk options, belly option the other way. I won't bother going through the triple because it's the same as Blair talked to you about. In fact, we never used to run the triple. We used to just run this football play. And we never, we kind of evolved to the triple option. And to me, if you run this, you really, if you only want to run, you, you can get away with only running one <coughs> We have a little more time than maybe you guys do. We have spring ball so that you know, we can 
spend some time running them both. But really, fellas, you can run just one of them and get the same, you know, coach it up real well, and I think you get the same result. And we just, the only reason we run both of them is because we're taking advantage of what this guy has right here. All right, first thing we do, anytime we're going to run this play, we tell our guard to keep your split down. Normally, we're two feet here. We're two feet right here, and it will be either two or three with the tackle, maybe sometimes four. But our guard will always be at two feet forward, except this play. We tell them to keep to a one-foot split. The reason is because we want to make sure that we get this type of action. Right? Because what happens, uh, or you're going to put your best, best offensive lineman here, here, and here. At least we do. Okay? These are our worst offensive lines. Right there. And from an athletic skill position, athletic ability. Four free football teams put their best defensive linemen here and here. Okay? So, we got our course matched up against their back. And that's why, and we don't really reach a whole lot from our offense, so that's why we want to make sure we get that crossing action. Because you guys know that on crosswalk and belly, that if there's an A gap player, they usually don't crosswalk. They just make a gap call and, and run the ice over there. Well, when you first put the belly option in, that's what they tell you to do the same thing. We don't do that because we want to get that half of one down and that guard pull. So the reason why we move him to a one-foot split is because that center's got to protect that A-gap long enough for the tackle to get down there. And so we're squeezing, squeezing down the area that the center has to be responsible for, plus it reduces the flank also. So anyway, we close down to a one-foot split. We're going to bring him down, his assignment is to gap down, his assignment is to pull the wall. Same thing. Don't get any depth. Go with that guy like you're going to track his ass. And let him walk himself. Now, I will tell you this. That's what we say, but actually, when we actually do it, that guard will get a little bit of depth. The reason is because when that five technique comes up field and he realizes he's not getting blocked by the, by the offensive tackle, and he goes to, to uh, you know, redirect and close, he's already up the field, and you're one man closer than what it was when it was a tight end there on down option. So, you may have to have your guard bubble just a little bit because he's so much closer to the guy and he's trying to walk. But you won't have to bubble much because this guy will actually try to fight back up into the line because he doesn't want to get trapped. So we, we feel that we can get the law, but again, coaching them the same way. Okay? So we go ahead and get him law. Again, same philosophy. We don't want to worry about the match. You want to get the fullback in front of the quarterback. The fullback or tailback, whatever you want to call it, his steps are the same as if it was 83 crosswalk. The only difference is he speeds up the footwork. You know, on 83 crosswalk, he's lead, crossover, plant, get the football and read. Right? On belly option, it's the same footwork, but he's gaining ground and he's just moving through it a lot faster. Lead, crossover, plant, and just going right up the field like this. Now, we don't get a match because he's going so fast. The quarterback is reverse pivoting, just like you put on 83, he's coming over the midline, puts the ball into his third hand, and just follows the pullback right around the wall. Okay? I'll go over what happens when the guy runs up the field. So right now, let's see we got him lost. So the pullback, again, is going to have the same, same responsibility. He's going to get outside that wall block, and he's going to look to block the alley. <laughs> Okay? Now, depending on what type of coverage shell there is, we will tell him where to look. If it's a 3 deep, he looks inside. If it's a 2 deep or in that cover 8 or cover 4 thing, okay, he will look probably to the outside because he will look and block this safety right here. Alright? This is our fish key. We're going to come inside. We're going to wall of my factor. If like we were running crossblock, that's going to be blocking on the uh, crossblock. The corner's going to get stopped by the wideout. We come off and, and pitch off him. 
Now, I really don't have this drawn correctly because most of the time we'll see that outside back that's lined up on our outside of our half back. And again, I think that's because of our passing here. So that's why the, uh, the heat, if, I, if their linebacker would be this tight, the way I've got it drawn here, we may go into that game and tell the half back to go ahead and block him and then maybe crack the safety, you know, tell that pull back, the look of the mic back or whatever, come off and pitch off the corner, just depending on how they play out there and flank that particular week. But normally, we're going to go ahead and pitch off this guy, if he's a flat defender, and this coverage will stop him and put a pull back on him. Okay. But that's how we run the option. Now, if you're walking in front, just like whatever. Any question with that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll leave the quarterback. I'll leave the quarterback on that. Okay. He, all right. Um, we tell him what we're, we're going to tell him that we feel it's very important that he gets his first step over the midline. Okay. So he's going to take and he's going to get his step completely over the midline. Now I, I don't know, you know, how deep that's going to be, depending on depending on uh, how long legged he is. Okay, but the thing we want to, the coaching point is on this second step, he's got to know what's happening at the plan. Okay, because we coach, and again, we do this, maybe, maybe this isn't right, but we've been successful in doing it. You know, this guy just may do this. He may be completely fooled, or maybe they're worried about this play, or whatever, or they want him to stop the wagon, or they're just going to get up field. So they didn't get outside. So what happens is when our guard pulls and he and we coach that if he takes a pull step and if that defensive end is on my back shoulder, right, I have my guy yell kick, which tells the quarterback and the tailback that I'm kicking him out. Okay? And that's that we just use that for lack of better. So he'll go second step, he'll go kick, kick, and he'll just run out there and trap. Okay. Now, our tailback and our quarterback have to read that because what will happen is they'll go inside that, that trap and then get back outside. Yeah, that takes a lot of coaching. Okay, and that's why I'm saying maybe he might be better off than just running the triple versus this. But we do the same thing on down option when we go to the tight end. But the difference is this is one man closer to the <coughs> midline than when you go the other way. So that's why when we coach this guy on his second step, you, you got to have that head back around so you can see what's happening. Although we have the guard say kick, okay, I might get a guard that has laryngitis that week, so our quarterback got to be able to see it. So that's why that first step has got to be over the midline. And, and when you time it out, and when you breath it out, if he gets, I mean, he gets over the midline, Okay, we tell him six inches over the midline, what we tell him, okay? But, but when he gets over the midline, our fullback will hurry up and they'll be close enough. I mean, it won't be, you know, he may have to go like that if he wanted to hand it off, but they'll be running past each other enough of the deception there that you might get somebody back there thinking it is going to be the belly play. The quarterback really is the guy that ends up running the football on this play. And that's why we feel it's important that the tailback gets out in front of them so that nobody can come down to the alley. Now, one thing that we do a little bit different, and I'll talk about this on the triple than what Blair does. And again, you know, I think Blair does a hell of a job. In fact, I call him whenever I got any questions on this play. The only thing that we would do different with our quarterback. is we tell him not to run from the inside shoulder of the pitch key, run inside the pitch key. So I come down and that's the pitch key, I'm an almost 90 degree turn and go, okay? Now, the first couple of times you run the football or run that play, quarterback going to keep the ball. But here's what happens, all right? If I'm playing and I'm the pitch key, and I'm out here and that quarterback comes off the match and turns up field, pretty soon I'm going to start doing what? I'm going to start doing this. All right, and then, ball's kicked. 
said, and now we're out on the flank, these guys are carrying the ball that we want to carry the ball, carrying it. And we brought it that way, and again, I got that. Again, I'm not a, a guru on triple option by any stretch, but you know, we got that from OU, really, is where we got it from. Okay? But we tell our guys, you can get inside the 50. That's all we tell them. We don't say run to the outside shoulder, near shoulders, ear hole left. It's drive inside the 50. So, getting back to what I was talking about here on the uh, belly option or down option, that same velocity with our quarterback, and he comes over, he got the ball. Remember, we're pitching off four, we normally, he just go. So that's why that fullback has to be in front of him on that play. Okay? And that's why we do it that way. So that he's blocking uh, for the quarterback to be out. We just tell our quarterback to be inside the pitch. Yes. The line blocking won't change. Um, back to, again, you can run whatever backfield action. Um, Most of the time when we run this play, okay, we are going to run it to a three technique. And I, when I explain it to you, you'll see why. Okay? We will run it to a one or a two eye. It's a gamble. Okay? You know, but before we run it to that, we've got to be pretty sure what the three technique is doing on the back side. <coughs> and, and again, I'll explain that as I go through here. But most of the time, we will run it to a three technique. So, what we will do is we'll run, since we're running uh, 40 to the split end, we'll call 44 scissors and 6. Okay, because 6 is the point of attack. His assignment in our book is area delay backwards. We tell our guys whenever you have an area assignment and there's someone over you, it now becomes an on assignment. So he will block, he will block the three technique. Okay. Now, before I go over here, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got to go the wrong way here. He has area delay factor sign. Okay? Now, this is why I was saying, and I, I'm drawing it backwards from what I told you. We normally run it to a three, but the reason we have to know what this three technique is doing on this side is because he has what we call an outside side. He's going to show pass. And if this guy takes an inside charge, we're dead. That's why we don't like to run it to a three technique, okay? Being the back side. Now, if he does what we think he's going to do and stay in that B gap and rush, we're okay. Because we're going to end up blocking him like that. Pat is going to do the same thing. Okay? And he'll take the C gap rush. Okay? If this pack, if this guy would stay wide, he would end up blocking the back. If this guy would run some type of a slant move or be a seven technique and come into the C gap or tackle. There to take. Okay. Our center, the okay, is right gap on left, so he'll block here and he'll cut him off. Okay? Now, our guard is very delayed backwards, so he's going to protect the mesh. He's going to keep that two eye from getting in the mesh up the center and then he's going to be delayed back. Okay? Our tackle is going to pull and read the center. So if the center is blocking the A-gap player there, he'll 
will come around and you'll block the first back. Now, when we run this play, of course, this is what we're anticipating to happen. Okay. He's going to block first thing off the tackle. So five seconds for somebody to change him. You'll block in. Now, for timing purposes, our 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 uh, alignment, our outside foot is three yards, three and a half yards um, from the outside foot of the tackle. And we just changed that this year. We used to have our inside foot three and a half yards. That was because of our passing game. But anyway, you'll take a gap step for timing purposes from back underneath. Obviously, safety. And I think the key coaching point for quarterback is that he has got to run through that match 100 miles an hour like he's got the football to get this type of flow. And then here's our point of attack right here. Now, if we're going the other way, got a couple things that will change. They were running 88. Okay. Now, same thing. You want him to. You got gap on area, so you got man in this area. He's going to block on. Says the tight end. We're running the play to the tight end. We keep him in the block. The reason is because we want to protect the match. Okay. So when when the face is coming to him, we leave him there to protect the match. <coughs> Tackle's pulling. Center's going to block there. He's going to read the, the five block. Block first back that shows. Outside. Outside. Block first thing off the tap of ass. Instead of coming to keep that motion, just come. So take a jab step and just come. And just stay. Now, here's what happens. And really, we found this out. Our kids told us this. We didn't coach it. I mean, we prepared our kids. If we have a two eye here, sometimes what happens is our center pushes in there. This guard will actually go behind that center. Okay? Well, that, I mean, that just kind of happens on its own. All right? He's still got this wide rusher. If it's a one technique, I one. If he would do that and do that, you know, we have a block because we're zone blocking team. Or if he comes like that and goes like that, we're still in good shape. But we found that when this guy was in a wider A gap alignment, whether it's two eye or gap, this guy actually ends up in you win that film up where he'll end up going behind the center to block that. <coughs> But that, that's it. Now we rather run it this way because we don't have to worry about trying to guess what that preset needs to do. But you can do it this way. I think there are times when you have to run it this way to give you give get the counter or scissors play back the other way. But we would much rather run it into preset so that our right guard is the left guard is just locked. Okay, that's it. Now. Delaware runs Sally, and Sally, you know, if you talk to Ted Kennedy, he'll tell you Sally's your best play, counter play. Um, and it probably is. When you watch it on film, they gas you. Um, we just, for whatever reason, I just haven't been able to get it coached up. We used to have a lot more success using the blocking tool. But the backfield and everything is pretty much the same, but it's just, they just no block everything. And we just haven't been successful at it. So we, we stay with that. Uh, any questions with any of that? So if you're running with the dive back, with the dive back, running with the dive back carrying the ball? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what we will do is just like again, if we were running, if we were running 88 down option, let's say for example, uh, to the, uh, or let's say 82, I'll be right after that, and I'm in the dive back position. Well, on 
these two down off and we give them the same rule. The two outside are the one outside is in a wall. But regardless of what he does, his first couple of steps are going to be just like this, okay, to get outside the end. So we have him do the same thing. And what we found, okay, what we have found is that actually it's two steps. Okay? He takes a lead step with his outside foot, he'll take a crossover step with his inside foot, and then all he just kind of does is pivot and come back. I know you talked to uh, um, guys down at Carnegie Mellon, they'll, they'll do it with a crossover, lead, and then come back this way, which, you know, we, we try to do it that way because it seems like it would make a lot of sense for our kids. They lead step so naturally, we just let them go ahead and do it. We don't over coach them on the floor to do that. But uh, the, kids we, the two kids that we have playing halfback now, when you watch them on the field, go lead, cross over, and we just kind of pivot and back over. Yeah, I think you could go either way. So, and again, we just do it for timing purposes. That's why we don't try to over coach them. We just want to make sure that it times up right. Um, and um, uh, uh, Warren Ruggiero, who used to uh, be my offensive coordinator before he took the head job at Glenville. I mean, he, he, he just tell him, hey, you got to be here when the quarterback's ready to use the ball. The guy that I have now is a little more of a technician, and he, he so he tries to do everything, you know, the other, he's kind of the other extreme. Um, but uh, you know, Warren really never got into a whole lot of technique, and um, he would just say, hey, you get here, and you have to get here. How are you have to get here. The guy I have now is a little more, you know, a little more technique conscious, and what he teaches is we cross over and come back to the middle. And it's timed out pretty good for us. And actually, to be honest, that's a better way. We found we've had more success when the dive back carries it. I mean, our uh, efficiency rating isn't that much greater, maybe, but we get bigger plays. More bigger plays out of time. We're pretty solid. It's pretty steady play with the wing, but we get bigger plays sometimes. I don't know why. I guess we forget about the dieback or come back or whatever. But we get seems like we get bigger plays with the dieback area. And we also, along with that, is we'll also run counter crisscross, hand the ball off to the wing, give it to the dieback and come back. Again, that seems to be you know, better force than handing it to the wing. And it's the same thing. Any other questions with any of that? <clears throat> now, one of the other things, and I'll just go over this. We use this formation quite a bit still because of our passing game. We've used flat motion. Okay? Uh, where now you can see we're into a trip set um, and we can run, you know, our, which we feel good <coughs> in that quarter, quarter, half coverage being in a three by one, you really can put them in a lot of binds. Okay? And I'll go through some of those pass routes in the next hour. But I did want to go through what we will do with this flat motion. We will run out of this, okay, what we call 36 counter at two, 36 counter short. We don't really run 36 counter that much anymore.
playoff formation quite a bit. Because of the coverage uh, that we get, we want to do this formation where we, these are inside, inside receivers that are tight ends. Okay? Now we can get into a trip as I showed you before by putting our tight end here and our left half back over here and do the same thing. But, but we use that formation and that motion quite a bit. Probably our best play is that one right there. Actually, this is counter three. <coughs> and the reason we call it counter three is because we want our people to know that there's a split end on that side, not a tight end. Delaware still calls it counter two, regardless if they run to a tight end or to a split end. trips, we're going to get the safety to come down to an invert, and we'll end up getting like, they'll end up being like that, so I'll draw it up. Okay, counter at three, he's the ball carrier. And this is why I think this play works so well. This guy is really in a conflict. So that defensive end, which had right here, he's sitting there, he's got the fullback coming at him on a kick out. You got the quarterback with the football threatening to get outside of him. Okay? So he's kind of in a box. Alright? The way we block this, this is the off path this way, is he's going to block that guy right there. Now, what we have done, what we've coached this tackle to do, we've kind of evolved to this. If this tackle if the guard next to him tells him he's a one technique, he does what we call a flash and then goes to the mic. If it's a two eye, or if it's a three, he'll double team. If it's a two eye, he will secure the block of the guard and then go to the mic. But if it's a one technique, and all he does is he just stands up. Right? We're trying to tell that end it's a pass. Whether it works or not, I don't know. I don't know whether it's in school, but uh, you, you tell the tackle that if that's the one that means the guard should be able to handle him, you flash, try to keep him wide, and then we'll come down to the head of my back. The reason is we got a 195 pound, 200 pound tailback <coughs> trying to block a 260 to 270 pound in, trying to soften him up a little bit. Okay? Center will block back. We tell him not to go back to the three technique, let the three technique come to you. And so he'll sit, he'll step back and walk right there, let the three technique come to him. All right, his guard knows we're running at three, so it's gonna be a short hole. So he's just gonna pull right here. And nine times out of 10, what ends up happening is he ends up kicking that backer out. Um, you know, or if he would some reason get sucked in, he could wall him. But most of the time, it ends up being a kick out. Right? This tackle is on what we call a pull check assignment. He's going to pull flat and hard to protect that B gap. So if that guy would want to penetrate, we'll clip him at the line of scrimmage. Most of the time, like I said, these interior people read up, he's going to react that way. Center will be there to block. Right? Tight end is going to cut off. We mesh. We carry the football right there. We get, a lot of times we'll get big holes because this guy's worried about the quarterback keeping the ball and he'll widen you know, there's a big hole in there where this guy's on an island, he's just got too much room to, to uh, cover. Okay. Now, if they start cross hacking and start squeezing you, obviously then you go to 36 counter bootleg. What, what we do is we'll pin him there. Now we still run the old traditional bootleg route, bring him down in here for six steps.
out and they run him on an angle flag and he comes to uh, cross quarterback out of the ball, run past Austin and County Blue But those two plays really um, complement each other. Mm -hmm. But now you can run you can run that same play by using the old three step motion too. We run the flat motion because of our passing game, you know, getting into our trips passing game, which really that quarter quarter half, uh, you know, I, and what we do with our passing game, I mean, we really put a lot of people in a lot of problems with that. Okay. But that's the reason why we do that out of that formation. Okay. Counter short, just to show you. Um, Track the nose guard, track the one technique. Okay. <coughs> He's going to block. He's going to hit into the one technique. Clear route, we're going to throw it, but then he's looking for the loop route. 
Our halfback is coached that if it's zone, you'll glide through there. Right? If it's man, and he'll know if it's man because his outside back will be running with him, and he'll run, he'll run through there and we'll put it back and leave the ball. Right? But that's tight. Off of that, we run what we call cowboy. He runs the clear route again. See, again, he's keeping that, that free safety or that safety that's reading number two. He's keeping him deep. That's why he runs the clear route. He's not going to be involved in the underneath stuff at all. He now runs the curl. And he runs through the flat. And now it is just a curl flat combination. Okay? And he's occupied. You know, there's factor that wants to run to the flat and run with it. This corner is playing outside attitude because he knows that. This guy runs a flat release, normally the safety is going to be helping with inside. Safety can't come inside because he's got to run with that guy. The curl route is usually open. Same thing on the back side. He's got a cover three or a cover um, a two, you know, either. If it's cover three, he runs a post. If anything else, he'll run a fly route. Let's say if they do go to cover three, all right, when you do that, they do go to cover three, or when we do that, they do go to cover three, you know, the best draft against cover three is curl, all curl. You can't cover. And then you got five underneath zones occupied, you only got four underneath pieces, or you think, you got three knees. And so what we do is he'll plant, hook up, curl. If he's in the dive back position, no flare, curl, step, flare. Tell your quarterback, get over two sides backwards, jump him, and then you curl combination to that side. So I jump back, and that back is jump, and he plays my hook, I'm going to read the curl over here. That back is jumping, I'm going to read it over here. And we don't normally run the curl out of that. You know, we, We'd rather, if we know a team's going to be in cover three, we'd rather run <clears throat> maybe something out of like that because now we can really put the stuff on. Then read the quarterback and just the other guys get to the different areas. Okay? Um, quarterback can see the jump, you know, the back and jumps them, you know, with the curl combination. Now, if they play that cover eight, and they got that thing covered because you got the safety coming there, you the corner playing that, back to run with that, back to run with that, safety playing that, and the corner playing outside over the top, you got your mic back to there. You're not playing it out good, which is uh, that wall would come into a you know, five under. Okay. But, uh, if you get them to go to cover three, after you motion the trips or line up the trips, you just run what we call curl. Alright. A um, couple other things here real quick about how many of you guys in here see a 50? I tell you what, you ask me what you want to know because we really don't see a damn 50. And the only time we would see a 50 is if they were in a 4 3 and then slide your defensive line one way and then slide your back to the other way. That's the only time we ever see it. Okay, so um, I'll try to tell you what we used to do when we did see it. And maybe give you some suggestions on some of the things, but uh, four years, which question? Yeah, I just see it there. 
what's your favorite uh, this play? Okay, when we see this defense, we would want to work, we would want to start as a flank. Okay, now the thing you got to realize there are four flanks when we see football. Okay, there's the There's the tight end die back flank. There's the split end wing flank. <coughs> and then there's the tight end wing flank and the split end die back flank. Those are your four flanks. We we would start trying to find a flank. Now, if I, I think Buck Sweet's really good. Okay, you can get that backside guard, get to that back of Wally. And if you're really straight, you're pushing past the hole, you know, the, the 90 degree cut will help you. Down option. Um, now, we really don't like the triple option versus the straight 50. Okay? Um, we will probably run the mid line option. Okay, if we would run against a 50 team, and we know a team's going to give us some type of variation of that look, a zero, a four, and a five, or two fives, or whatever, we're running the midline, probably. Yes, obviously, yes. But if it's a zero node, we'll, 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 we could either go either way, but we'll try to run it to the guy that's responsible for the first. Which capital is responsible for the DM? Because okay. most of the time, now, I don't know about you guys, but what we'll, we'll see is he may line up like this, but he'll be the, the drop in, so he'll be the contained rusher. He'll be the contained rusher, so it'll allow him to be the B gap rusher over there. Okay. Now, if they drop the other end and attack with the other side, it's probably the B gap rusher. But we'll run after the B gap rusher. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, and to be very honest and upfront with you, uh, I don't have a whole lot of answers for you because we're just starting to run again. We have our athletes that we have now at quarterback or more traditional than the D guys. When I took the job over Clary and Coach Ogilevsky with a five wide straight drop back, and so all the quarterbacks that I inherited were of that type. And that's why we ended up throwing the ball as much as we did with those guys. Okay, but now with our quarterback, we're a little, we recruited a little more well, we're used to doing, so that's why we get into it. But, and that's why I say we won't run them triple versus a straight 50 because I don't have any answers. Just like Blair said, you know, we started da 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 Well, we're in that stage right now. Okay. But to answer your question, we would try to find a flank. Now, to me, waggle and keep pass are part of your flank attack. So you want to, not just the sweep or the down option, but you want to include waggle and keep pass because that's part of your flank attack. Okay. Traditionally, if you run the waggle to a tight end, that's probably a lot of times is a key for the quarterback. Because you can get the, you know, with the inside release of your tight end, and him squeezing, usually you get a nice quick log. So versus a 50, your quarterback, when he runs the waggle to the tight end, you might even want to coach him up think run. Okay? If you run waggle to the split inside and have an end hanging over air out there, that's probably a tackle. You're probably going to end up kicking him out before quarterback can have to set up for the ball. That's why when we run laggles to split in, we usually call a call route because the quarterback is going to have to end up setting up probably. There's nothing to split that in. He's just going to run up field. Okay, now, I know a lot of times people will coach these ends in a 50, okay, that if the halfback on your side goes away from you, run up field and stop the way. And so if I'm playing this guy right here, and this half that goes that way, run up field stuff to buy. But they don't need to hurt you coming back. Okay? Wrong. I'll show you what you do. So uh, that's what a lot of people will say. Okay, run up field. So um, with him, you know, if you're gonna run wide while he's going this way, and there's nothing to influence. If he run run this way, he goes away, you still got that. You know, you might get that in squeeze a little bit. Well, that's what we're telling you. But we'll start there. Now, 
Once you've got the flank established, okay, now what are they doing to stop the flank? Are they running the backwards out of there or are they widening the path to help? Okay, if they're widening tackles, we would like to run some type of pullback game, cross block or either track or on for the pullback off the buck action. Take advantage of that. If they're running the backwards out of there to try to stop, then that's when we would like to use our counter stuff. Okay, uh, maybe counter and just pass the pass counter uh, or scissors or salad if that's what you run. Okay, um, but uh, depending on what they're trying to do to help those defensive ends on the uh, line. Okay. Um, and then uh, probably, I don't know what you're seeing, but you could probably, if they're playing a five-man front, you could probably determine what coverage you're going to be in by what formation you're in. If you're in a wing and a spread in, you know, I would think you'd probably be in a cover three. Okay? If you were split in and dive back and you had a tight end wing on the other side, it might roll up and play two hard corners on you. Okay? So you could maybe design your passing game to take advantage of you knowing what coverages they're going to be in by you being in certain formation. Okay? Um, but uh, uh, like I said, I think if they're in cover three, I just run curl. Put your half back over the center, like this formation right here. Still in, you hook up over the center, you run a curl, <coughs> you've got a flare, you run a curl there. Flare, or you could run into the flat. Yeah. And then just change the quarterback. You go back, you right half back. And we'll go, if he's on cover, he the football. If you come back, if that back is jumping, I'm going to work over here. If this one's that back is jumping, then I'm going to work over here. The reason is because in past defense, and again, this is just my philosophy or what I think. Anytime you can run offensively, and I'll just draw this up. You know, maybe illustrate it a little bit better. This way. Okay. Realistically, if you run the ball or want to pass the ball to the right of my pen here, over here, okay, they've got three on two. Okay? They got okay, <coughs> zone coverage if there's one more defender than our receiver. You know, they can take if it's two on two, you know, I think the offense. Okay? So, same thing if you want to the left. So what I'm saying is one of these guys has to respect it. As soon as, let's say it's this guy, he respects him and jumps him. Now you're two on two over here. You're going to push him off with a good route running. You know, you've got to run a good route. He's going to bind. You take that away, throw it to the flat. He runs this way, you throw it to the curl. You know, it's just basic. I know you know how to coach that. But that's why in your passing attack, and that's why I say the trips versus that cover quarter, quarter, half, what we're trying to do is we're trying to match up the same number of receivers or zones that they have defenders. If they have one more defender than we have zones, they're going to beat us because, you know, they can bracket a guy or whatever. We feel that if we can get into a situation where we have the same number of zones as they have defenders, we feel like we're going to win. As long as we run good routes, you know, and not sloppy routes. So that's why I'm saying you can probably determine what you want to do in your passing attack by figuring out what coverages you know that you can get them into. You know, if they're playing TV, you might want to test the middle or maybe test the, the deep outside or, or whatever. Okay. But that's that's how we, we, we would do it. We would start at the flank and get that thing going. And now what are they doing to stop the flank? Are they widening the end or not tackle? If they're widening the tackle or whatever. Traps, pull back in, bring your pull back in. Okay. If the backers are going, then you want to run your counter. Okay. But I think the 
Right, 121 trap option crap. Okay. When we ran this play, let me first say we ran this play basically because we wanted to be able to run a lag back to the tight end. Because you can't really run the sweep with the split it because you have the overhanging end. Now if they kick down to an eagle look, you can run the sweep. But we would run this play, we weren't very good at it. We brought it though, just so that we could run wagon back to the tight.